All right, here's example 10 of evaluating trig with inverse trig. So we're going to be using this flowchart that we've been using uh, for the previous examples. So if you want to copy this flowchart to follow along with, check the video description. There's a link in there. You can click that link, open this up, print it out, and follow along if you like. Okay, so example 10 is the inverse sine of sine of 6 pi over 5. So with the flowchart, start up here. Um, is there a domain violation? No, there's not, because uh, we can take the sine of anything we want. The domain of the sine function is all real numbers. So uh, specifically, it's okay to take the sine of 6 pi over 5. That's totally fine. And then when we take the sine of something, we're going to get some value that's uh, going to be okay to put back into the inverse sign. So in other words, whatever value this has, it's okay to stick it in the inverse sign function because it came from the sign function. Okay? So just by definition of inverse, it's going to be okay to put it back in the uh, inverse function. Okay? So uh, no, there's no domain violations. Is there a domain violation? No. Is the function paired with its inverse? Yes. <clears throat> so here we see sine is paired with inverse sine. It's sine and inverse sine paired together. So is the function paired with its own inverse? Yes. Is it possible to cancel? Well, let's see. What were the rules for canceling um, expressions like that? So the rules said that uh, inverse sine of sine of 6 pi over, f well, oops, not really what I want to write. Uh, the rule in general says the inverse sine of sine of x equals x if negative pi over 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to positive pi over 2. But uh, 6 pi over 5 does not satisfy this. 6 pi over 5 is not between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. 6 pi over 5 is actually a little bit larger than pi. Okay? Um, so 6 pi over 5, since it's not between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, uh, we cannot cancel. So this does not equal 6 pi over 5. So that's unfortunate. We have to try something else. Uh, what do we have to try? Well, we're just going to keep following the flowchart and see. Okay, okay so uh, again, we cannot cancel because uh, 6 pi over 5 is not between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. And we can only cancel if uh, this x here is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, which 6 pi over 5 is not. Okay, so continuing. Is it possible to cancel? No, follow the no path. Can the problem be solved using the unit circle? In other words, is 6 pi over 5 a nice number that shows up on the unit circle somewhere? And no, it's not. At first glance, it might look like it is because it's some number times pi divided by some other number. But uh, angles like that over 5, those are not special angles on the unit circle. So we don't really know much about them uh, the way we know about pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, etc. So uh, no, this is uh, not a special angle on the unit circle, which means we cannot solve the problem with the unit circle. So can the problem be solved using the unit circle? No. Is the inverse function on the inside? Uh, no. Inverse function, sine inverse, that's on the outside. And the regular function, uh, the non-inverse function, is on the inside. So no, the inverse function is not on the inside. Is the inverse function on the inside? No, follow the no path. Is the function paired with its own inverse? Now notice we actually asked this question before, but we have to ask it again because um, once we make it this far, it actually depends uh, whether or not the uh, function is paired with its own inverse. Um, it depends, uh, that's going to affect what happens next. So is the function uh, paired with its own inverse? Yes, sine is paired with inverse sine. So is the function paired with its own inverse? Yes, so we use reference angles. Okay, so notice that's different from example 8 and 9, where we use reference triangles. Uh, in examples 8 and 9, we had reference triangles, but now in example 10 here, we're going to use reference angles. Okay, okay so uh, we talked about reference angles a long time ago in a uh, much earlier video, so we're not going to go through all of the same little details again, but uh, we are going to start it the same way. So when we work with reference angles, we want to first draw the angle that we're given. Okay, so 6 pi over 5, what does that look like? Well, notice that 6 pi over 5 is 5 pi over 5 plus pi over 5, okay? But 5 pi over 5 is just pi, so this is pi plus pi over 5. And notice that pi over 5 is an acute angle, right? Pi over 5 is between 0 and pi over 2. Okay, so pi over 5 is between 0 and pi over 2. Okay, so uh, the point there is if we want to draw this, let's go ahead and draw that angle then. Okay, why do we point all that out? So let's go ahead and draw that angle. So here's uh, 0 puts us right here. If we go around here, we're going to be at pi. Okay, so that's pi and then plus pi over 5. And pi over 5 is between 0 and pi over 2. Okay, so what that means is that um, since we're right here, if we go pi over 2 more units, we're going to be all the way over here. But pi over 5 is less than that. Okay, and pi over 5 is less than that. So again, um, we go around pi units. That covers this part right here. 
then we have to go pi over 5 more units. Well, pi over 5 is less than pi over 2. Pi over 2 more units would put us all the way over here, but we don't want to go that far. We only want to go pi over 5 more units, which is about just a really rough sketch. doesn't really matter. So uh, about that much. So this whole thing all together is 6 pi over 5. Okay, okay so a lot of stuff going on there. Well, not really, but it just looks like it is. Okay, so the point then is that uh, 6 pi over 5, 6 pi over 5 is in quadrant 3. So what does that mean? What does that mean about the sine of 6 pi over 5? If you're in quadrant 3, uh, is the sine positive or negative? Well, if you have an angle in quadrant 3, then that means uh, sine is negative. Remember, sine, uh, the sine function corresponds to the y-coordinate, and if you're in quadrant 3, you're below the x-axis. You're below the x-axis, so your y-coordinate is negative. Okay? So 6 pi over 5 is in quadrant 3, so uh, sine of 6 pi over 5 is negative. Okay? Okay, now let's find the actual reference angle. Remember, um, if we're in quadrant 3, what's the reference angle? The reference angle is going to be this angle right here. How do we get it? Uh, well, we're going to call that angle alpha. The reference angle is alpha equals, if you're in quadrant 3, you take the angle that you have, which is 6 pi over 5, and you subtract pi. Okay. So take the angle that we have, which is 6 pi over 5, subtract off pi, so if we subtract off pi, we'll be left with just this, which is the same thing as this. Okay, so take the whole angle, 6 pi over 5, subtract off this part only, and then what we're left with is just this part right here, which is what we want. Okay, so 6 pi over 5 minus pi, common denominator, pi is the same thing as 5 pi over 5. 6 pi over 5 minus 5 pi over 5 is 1 pi over 5, which is pi over 5. Okay, so um, that's our reference angle. Our reference angle is pi over 5. So alpha equals pi over 5. is the reference angle. Remember the shorthand notation for angle. Okay, so uh, this fact combined with this fact, together uh, these two things tell us that uh, sine of 6 pi over 5 equals uh, sine, or negative, sorry, negative sine of uh, pi over 5. Okay, because remember that's how reference angles work. So remember um, if you have an angle theta the sine of theta equals plus or minus sine of alpha, where alpha is the reference angle for theta, and this uh, plus or minus is determined by the quadrant of theta. Okay? So here, we have sine of 6 pi over 5, that's our theta, okay? and our alpha, our reference angle, is pi over 5. And we have a minus out here, because since uh, 6 pi over 5 is in the third quadrant, then the sine of 6 pi over 5 has to be negative, so that's why we have a negative uh, out here. Okay. And then just uh, this is just how reference angles work, is that sine of this angle equals uh, plus or minus sine of the reference angle. And we take the minus because uh, 6 pi over 5 is in quadrant 3, so the sine of 6 pi over 5 has to be negative. Okay, so we're just combining these two results that we got uh, into one uh, fact here, and then this is the fact that we have. So sine of 6 pi over 5 equals negative sine of pi over 5. And again, that's just a reference angle thing. Um, it's just, that's just how reference angles work. We did a lot of examples with this in uh, earlier videos. So anyway, uh, sine of 6 pi over 5 is negative sine of pi over 5. So let's put that back into here. Okay, so uh, inverse sine inverse sine of uh, sine of 6 pi over 5 is the inverse sine of s negative sine negative sine of uh, pi over 5. Okay, because, again, sine of 6 pi over 5 exactly equals negative sine of pi over 5. So sine of 6 pi over 5 is negative sine of pi over 5. So let's zoom in a little bit here. Okay, so inverse sine of sine of 6 pi over 5 is the inverse sine of negative sine of pi over 5. So now, um, this looks kind of weird, right? But remember, we can use the odd property now to simplify. So uh, remember that sine, uh, or negative sine of theta equals sine of negative theta because sine is an odd function. That's one of the ways of expressing what an odd function is. So since uh, sine is an odd function, then negative sine of theta is sine of negative theta, or specifically in this case, negative sine of pi over 5 equals sine of negative pi over 5. Okay, Okay. so um, how does that help us? Well now, 
Uh, since negative sine of pi over 5 is sine of negative pi over 5, then uh, from, again, that follows from the fact that sine is an odd function. Uh, since we have that, uh, then we can say that uh, inverse sine of negative sine of pi over 5 equals inverse sine of sine of negative pi over 5. And how's that help us? Well, notice now that uh, negative pi over 5 is actually between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Okay. What's significant about that? Well, now we can actually cancel, because remember, uh, remember that rule? The rule says that uh, inverse sine of sine of x equals x if uh, negative pi over 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to pi over 2. And this is actually true for negative pi over 5. Okay, negative pi over 5 is between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Therefore, uh, we can just say, now we can cancel. Okay? Now we can cancel. And then we have uh, negative pi over 5. And that is the answer to the, to the question. Uh, what is the value of inverse sine of sine of 6 pi over 5? Um, it's negative pi over 5. And again, how do we get there? Well, first, um, we follow the flow chart. Okay, we follow this flow chart all the way around, and then eventually the flow chart told us to use reference angles. And that's what we did here, was we first uh, drew the angle 6 pi over 5. We determined it's in quadrant 3. Because 6 pi over 5 is in quadrant 3, that means sine of 6 pi over 5 is negative. Um, we found the reference angle for 6 pi over 5. The reference angle is pi over 5. And then just by definition, uh, just by the the way reference angles work, that tells us then that sine of 6 pi over 5 is negative sine of the reference angle, pi over 5. Okay? This minus sign comes from the fact that this is negative, and this uh, pi over 5 is the reference angle. Okay? So um, then we have this. Then we took this and we put that into the uh, original problem here. So sine of 6 pi over 5 is negative sine of pi over 5. And then we have inverse sine of uh, inverse sine of negative sine of pi over 5 equals inverse sine of sine of negative pi over 5 because negative sine of theta is sine of negative theta because sine is an odd function. Okay? So we do have that going on. So, uh, and then we just, uh, after we did that, then we ended up with something here that's between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So now at this step we can actually cancel because inverse sine of sine of x equals x as long as x is between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Okay? So that's uh, that, and the answer again is negative pi over 5. So I want to point out uh, another thing we could have done here. Instead of using the fact that sine is an odd function, um, at this step we could have used the fact that inverse sine is also an odd function. Okay, so sine is odd, but remember inverse sine is also odd. So what that means is that uh, inverse sine of x, let's say inverse sine of negative x rather, equals negative inverse sine of x. Okay, so actually, uh, so since inverse sine is also an odd function, we could have used that fact instead. And then from this step, we could have said this equals negative inverse sine of sine of pi over 5. Okay. And then here, well, so without the negative sign, we can cancel this because pi over 5 is between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So that we can cancel this and we have pi over 5. And then with the minus sign out front, we actually have minus pi over 5. Okay, so two different ways of approaching it once we get here but both rely on the fact that we're dealing with odd functions. Okay? So uh, inverse sine and sine are both odd functions, and once we get to this point, we could use uh, either one of those facts. So this one's an odd function, this one's an odd function, we could use either one of those facts. And we'll get to the same answer, which is negative pi over 5. Okay, so that's example 10 of evaluating trig with inverse trig. A couple different ways of uh, approaching it once we get to this point here. And uh, just another example with the flowchart there, and then more examples coming up in the next few videos.